to finish up the calculations. Previously, we've gone through the basic information that we've had available, talked about the setup of the problem. We solved for the market value weights, the after-tax cost of debt, the cost of preferred stock financing, and each of the three methods for the cost of common stock financing and got a total average cost of our common stock financing. Now we're going to put that all together to solve for the marginal cost of capital. The marginal cost of capital takes the weight of debt times the after-tax cost of debt plus the weight of preferred times the cost of preferred plus the weight of common times the cost of common. So we need each of those components that we solved for previously. Let's start with the weights. We said that the weight of debt was 0.22. The weight of preferred was 0.15. and the weight of common was 0.63. Next we need the after-tax cost of debt, which we said was 5.15 percent. Then we need the cost of preferred stock financing Cost of preferred stock financing was 8.82%. And lastly, we need the cost of common stock financing. We got 13.03% as the cost of common stock financing using the dividend valuation, 12.16 from the security market line, 13.3% from the bond yield plus risk premium, took an average of the three, came up with 12.83% for our cost of common stock financing. Now the last thing we have to do is just work through the math. 0.22 times 5.15 gives us 1.13. Point one five times eight point eight two gives us one point three two and lastly point six three times twelve point eight three gives us eight point zero eight. Add those up, 0.13 plus 1.32 plus 8.08 gives us a total cost of capital of 10.53%. And that is our final answer couple of quick comments on the cost of capital before we wrap this up. Just a reminder of what that means. That's telling us that this company is spending approximately 12 or approximately 10 and a half percent on each dollar and financing that it's using. If you can think of this as that's what it's costing the company to obtain its capital in order to generate excess value for shareholders what they need to do is use that capital to earn more than a 10.53% rate of return. So if you think of our capital budgeting chapters where we talked about internal rate of return, what this is telling us is that the internal rate of return for a project has to be higher than 10.53% in order to make it a worthwhile project. Or if you want to think in terms of net present value, the 10.53% would be our required return or discount rate that we use in solving for the net present value. If the net present value is positive at a 10.53% rate 
required return, then that would indicate a project that's adding value to our shareholders. From a test perspective, one thing that's important if you look through this example is it took us quite a while and quite a few calculations before we got to our final answer. It's very easy to make a mistake somewhere along the way, so it's very important on this type of problem to show your work so that I can see if you make a minor mistake, I don't end up penalizing you in multiple places for the same mistake. If you show your work carefully, I will try to avoid penalizing you for carryover mistakes. For instance, if you make a mistake in calculating the after-tax cost of debt and plug it in here wrong, then you're going to get the wrong answer here. If I can see that you made that mistake and you show your work all the way through, I won't penalize you for the incorrect marginal cost of capital because I already know where you made the mistake. Another thing that's important is sometimes on tests students forget one of the steps. For instance, maybe they can't solve for the cost of preferred stock. If you leave that blank here, you can't get a final marginal cost of capital answer and I'll have to penalize you in both spots because you haven't answered this step. So instead, if any place along the line you can't solve a portion, make up a value, plug it in the rest of the way, and that way I can grade your work as opposed to just penalizing you multiple times for missing that one spot. So be sure on these type of problems on a test to show all your work carefully and that will help you get the most points possible if you do make a mistake somewhere along the way. That wraps up our marginal cost of capital.